This game is so hard. Why do I have to fight this crazy guy on a horse when I only just found out how to do a roll? I don't have any clothes and my weapon is a wooden club. Yeah, I think the thing with this boss is you're not really supposed to fight him now. Um, you should probably go and kill something easier, maybe? Oh, hello, my dudes. Welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. Last episode, we built the computer system and between then and now, I've upgraded the house just a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna leave Aquilario here. Let's take a look around the house. Now, as you can see, we've moved the Create Grindstone down to the basement, and we've put in some more Botany Hopper Pots as well. The ones that had cactus in, well, I've just left the one here for now, because we're not going to need a lot of cactus. But we've also got sugarcane and all of the trees, but one spare pot for when we want to put down acacia. Now, I've gathered up basically absolutely everything that was on the supply boat and moved it over here into the computer system. You can see now we've got four more 16K discs and our storage is actually 50% full. Yeah, take a look. Loads and loads and loads of stuff. But I've also discovered like little pockets of minerals and resources that I never knew I had. And this is always the way. You always have like more diamonds hidden away in different little chests than you actually realize. So having a computer is a great way to kind of collate everything and see what we have loads of. For example, raw salmon, cooked mutton, amazing. Now I've prepared a to-do list today because I really do want to keep on top of things. And this is basically how it's going to go. We're going to install the kitchen because today we're going to be kitchen fitters. We're going to put a mossy block in a botany hopper pot. We're going to do our research, do the rails, get the guards gear, and then look at what we're going to be building next. Well, okay, let's get started. Now, in my backpack, I've prepared a whole bunch of these basic blocks from Cooking for Blockheads. Now, most of these are very simple to make. The oven is just iron furnace and black stained glass. And the sink, it's just terracotta, iron and water buckets. We had all this stuff lying around in the computer and I've basically gathered a whole bunch of what I think we'll need to get the kitchen up and running. But obviously, the first part of any good kitchen fit is destruction. So there we go, we've cleared out the floor, cleared out that table over there, and now it's time to put down the kitchen floor from Cooking for Blockheads. Here we go, now this is basically the multi-block structure, everything that's on top of these kitchen floor blocks is classed as the kitchen. Now we haven't decided to dye it because honestly, white and black is a pretty cool look. And there we go, one block to spare, pretty good. Now we're going to put in the kitchen corner cabinets, these are going to go obviously on these corners, wait no, that's not the right place. There we go. Now what I'd like to do is have the fridge and the oven facing the outside of the system because that way we're going to be able to get power in via the generator out there. That's our home power source. A cooking table and last but not least, the kitchen sink. Amazing. Wait, no, actually I want to switch those around. Traditionally, you always put like a kitchen sink by the window. So while you're washing your dishes, you have something to look at, right? Anyway, over on this side of things, we're going to come over and put in some kitchen cabinets. These are going to go up on top like this. And they're really just there for decoration, but they do also have a bit of storage. Now we're going to want a toaster as well, so we'll put that on the corner over there. Amazing. And what else have we got? Well, I've got a fruit basket that we can put there. And we can put all kinds of fruits in there if we want to. In fact, let's go grab some from the computer. Yeah, and there we go. That's mixed things up just a little bit. As for the fridge, we're better for the cooked mutton. Actually, no, I want that on my bar because I want to be able to eat that. Now, I accidentally created two clipboards because I lost my old one. Then I found it while I was, uh, you know, tidying up and moving things over with the computer. It's a very simple craft, but these kinds of things happen and they'll happen less often. Now we have a computer. So we've got everything in position now. Oh, except the cow in a jar. So we'll put that. Ooh, where are we going to put that? I reckon over here in the corner. And this is a great source of milk. Now on to the upgrades. So we're going to put an ice unit in the fridge. Right click like that. Boom. And that means now the fridge can create ice. Very nice. And for the oven, at the moment it uses fuel. But what we're going to do is put the heating upgrade in here. And what that does is it means it accepts power, like from out there, and uses power to cook stuff. Pretty cool. Now, before we're finished, we're going to give it one pass and decorate with dye. Now, what kind of dye have I got in here? Let's take a look. I've got lots of green dye. Do you want to have a green kitchen? Yeah, why not? 15 bits of green dye. Let's do it. Oh, but we want a different color for the... Ooh, oh, whoopsie daisy. 
Well, I guess this is green now, too. <laughs> Never mind. Actually, I, I, like, I quite like that. That's quite a cool look. So for the fridge, we're going to go with... What colour fridge do we want? Maybe lime. If everything else is dark green, then the fridge can be, you know, light green. So bam, a lime green fridge, and the rest of these are going to be dark green. Yeah, that's a pretty cool look. Amazing. Can't decorate the oven though, because it's pure white. Well, okay, we can scratch that off the list now. It was always just a simple thing to do, decorate the kitchen. And we'll put these remaining counter blocks back into the computer, because we might need them later on. So grab the clipboard and boom, Blockhead's kitchen complete. Next up, we're going to be doing moss in a botany hopper pot. Basically, a lot of recipes require mossy blocks. Yeah, you can often use mossy blocks to make weird kind of panels. And later on, the game uses loads of these for decorations. We're going to need them down the line, especially if we want to build a garden. So I think before we get the acacia, that's what we're going to put in this botany pot. And if you put a moss block into one of these hopper pots, it will actually create moss. So boom, that is moss pots on the way. Next up, let's get up to the colony and see how things are doing up there. So research, let's do it. Up to the university. Oh, actually, do you know, I'm going to add something here. I found a whole bunch of waystones. Basically, I've been gathering these as I go out and around and explore. And I think it's about time that we put down the waystones in the colony as an easier way to get around. For one, it's going to be so much easier to get back to the research if we have a waystone up here. But I'll take care of that in a bit. Now, they've gone home for the night because it's getting dark. But while it is dark, let me show you what we've done. Basically, we tried to go through the civilian research. We've got first aid done now, keen and stamina. So we've unlocked the hospital, we've unlocked the library, and we've unlocked first aid. More HP. We've got rails and outposts. We've got more dudes, and they can use rails. We've also researched higher learning. So we've unlocked the school. But we haven't touched ambition or remembrance yet. Now, beyond that, we have gone into combat and learned all of these. It's only 30 minutes per research for the first level one ones. So getting things like tactic training that unlocks the barracks was super easy. Avoidance, so our knights now can use shields, something else for us to craft. Improved leather, so they got more durability. And taunt, so that the enemies should, in theory, attack our knights rather than our colonists, yeah? So what is the research we want to do today? Well, we're going to go down technology because we need to think about building some of these more tech-heavy buildings. So biodegradable gives us the composter's hut, which is great for compost. But it is kind of good later on because it unlocks things like the plantation. And the plantation is essential. And down over here, I think also the sawmill is essential. Like I said, the miner is going to need loads of stuff that the sawmill creates. So we're going to go and grab 64 oak planks and 64 bone meal and get both of these researches done. And actually, all of our dudes should be in bed by now. So let's have a sleep as well. So wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Time to get back to the house. Now, it is a bit difficult to get to the house. You have to go through all of that cistern and stuff. But if you're cheeky, and I am, you can jump on the roof. Boom, let's go through this way. Oh, man, making shortcuts. So we're going to do two things. We're going to grab the waystones because I don't like having to zip around. And we're also going to see if we can find that bone meal. There's a stack of bone meal. Should be some oak in here too. Oh yeah, loads of this stuff. But before we go back to the university, let's put down a waystone. So I'm going to put the waystone... Hmm. Where am I going to put this? I reckon here. Here's good. Why not? And this is our house. So we're going to call this just simply home. Now we're going to want to use these waystones over at places where we're going to keep coming back to. So the university is definitely top of that list. I put it outside the front, but even then I still have to run all the way through the building, navigate all the way up through these stairs, get lost every single time, and it's a bit slow. So I'm just going to put it inside the uh, headmaster's office for now. Yeah, this will do nicely. And this is going to be the university. So easy. Okay, let's get this research done. So if memory serves, it was biodegradable. Boom. And down here, somewhere. 
Woodwork. Amazing. Those are going to take quite a while to brew. We can certainly tick that off the list. Boom. Next up, rails. So we're going to have to go home to the computer and bam, waystone. Here we go. Oh, so useful. So next up, we want to be building rails. Here we go. Now, this episode is very high octane. Sorry about that, but I'm just so excited to get all this stuff done. To make rails, we need, wait, osmium? There's got to be a better way. Surely I can just use iron. So it looks like there's been some changes in all the mods 9. The only way you can make regular Minecraft rails is either through mechanism and osmium, which we might actually have, or wooden rail beds and standard rails. Oh my god, and these need things like creosote. Well, I'm not making creosote, so I guess we're going to need some osmium. And I don't have any, as you guessed. So, well, time to bite the bullet. We're going to dive underground into the mine and grab ourselves some osmium. This stuff should be pretty common. So, on the hunt for osmium, I had no idea I'd ever need this stuff. But here we are, in the caves again. Osmium, hooray, we found some. Do -do -do, and we're going to, oh no, no, we can just use the, uh, the waypoint that we have over here at the builder's hut. Boom. So from construction to home. Oh my god, zipping around the colony has never been easier. So we have an ore hammer in here somewhere. Well, we've got two, actually. That's amazing. And we're going to use that to turn this raw osmium into dust. Always worthwhile doing. And now a job for Jumbo. Get over here. Put the osmium dust in here, and this will get us all the ingots we need. We're going to try and use rails to get around the colony as much as possible. But honestly, for now, all I really want to do is see some of the colonists use them because they look really cool. There we go. Three stacks should be fine. Put all this stuff back in the computer. So let's do it. We'll head over to construction and start plowing down these rails. Oh, yeah. Now, I really do hope the colonists use these because it took me ages to dig out this tunnel. Like, honestly, like seriously, a huge amount of time. You don't even know. And I hope it was worth it. If it stops kids from drowning though on the colony, it was well worth it. And there we go. So we're going to have a sleep and then camp out by one of the subway stations to see if these guys go home. Now one weird thing is, I'm not getting the message that colonists are sleeping through the night. I have a theory that we actually have colonists that don't have homes. And I'm not quite sure how that could happen but I feel like maybe turning off kids will be born is a good idea. So here we go. For now, we're at max capacity on the colony. We've got as many dudes as we can currently support. Let's go and make sure that no more dudes are going to be born. Settings, kids will be born off. So yeah, let's take a look. In information, how many of these dudes are homeless? Eight unemployed. Doesn't say any of these guys are homeless. I'm not sure if it would say if they were homeless here, though. What about the other tabs? Oh my god. Oh, wow. Look at this! So it looks like happiness is actually kind of being fixed. We're not seeing red across the board anymore. In fact, we're actually seeing a couple of greens. That's good news. So I guess it can't have been straw fingers that was making the colonists unhappy. Yeah, I think Dunny was just being, you know, crazy. She's always off believing in this crazy magic stuff. And I don't know, all sounds like nonsense to me. So the clipboard and what's next? Yeah, rails are in place. But let's go and camp out a location to see if people actually do use them. Oh, somebody just zipped through a rail. Yeah, oh, here we go. Oh, we're going to miss it. Yeah, look at them go. Those guys are storming along along the rails. Oh, that's amazing. So the system actually works. These guys are using the rails to zip around the colony. Oh, that's great news. Really cool to see. So rails check. All right, next up is a big one. We're going to get the guards loads and loads and loads of gear. But we're going to do this in a smart fashion. Now that we have like a stash, actually I'm going to use the waystone. Now that we've got a stash back at base, we've got couriers and a warehouse, we can just automate delivery of all of the items the guards need. So what are our iron stocks looking like? 260. That's a pretty good place to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a set of maybe six. So what should happen is when we load things into the stash, couriers come over here. Oh, look, an Ambriel Hoobies is already on her way. They'll come over here and put them back in the warehouse. 
saving us the hassle of going anywhere, and because this is right next to the computer system, it's just so convenient. Oh yeah, there she is right now. She feels very privileged to live here, but she's a bit confused. Now, did she access my stash from through the... Oh wow, yeah, I think she accessed the stash from above ground. I mean, that's kind of cheaty, but it's also really convenient for us. The couriers don't need to come all the way downstairs. Really cool. Now likewise, on the flip side, if there's something in the warehouse that I want, I can use this post box to request it. Now it's all well and good guards having gear, but they won't do anything without a sword. And in fact, the sword is the most important part. They'll basically defend the colony with, um, you know, rags or even cloth or even naked. As long as they have a sword, they're good to go. So the most important thing we can do now, and these are so cheap to make as well, is just fill this stash with swords out the wazoo. Here we go, yeah. And if we want to be even more efficient, we can put a hopper on top to drop items automatically into the stash. So another thing scratched off the list. The guards have gear, we've done rails, research, moss pots, and we've decked out our pretty cool kitchen. We've also handled most of the waystones we're going to need. Man, okay, amazing. So what is next? Well, I could put down these final two waystones. That sounds like a good idea. So yeah, over this way, and if we put a waystone by the tavern, that's going to make coming over here and hiring new dudes much easier. So for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this waystone Tavern X. But what I want you guys to do, if you've watched this far into the video, is let me know what you think this Constantinople Tavern should be called. And I'm happy with absolutely any kind of suggestion. Let me know. And the one that you guys like the most, I will definitely add as the name of the tavern. We'll keep this one in the chamber for now. Although I can see us wanting to go over to the agricultural district later on, or maybe even the industrial one. So now that our couriers are back in action, maybe it's time to start emptying the computer of things that we're going to want to store in the warehouse. What do I mean by this? Well, there's certain things that we just have absolutely no use for here, but the colonists can actually use. For example, this destructive iron pickaxe of the scholar. Maybe a miner can use that. Likewise, this diamond shovel, it's on its last legs, but I reckon a builder will get some good use out of it. There's also a stone sword, stone pickaxe, stone hoe all kinds of tools that these colonists will actually put to good use. Okay, so while we wait for the research, what else can we do? Well, maybe it's time that we filled up some of these guard towers. We've got space for guards, but we haven't actually employed them yet. Here we go, this is a guard tower, so we can just set this to manage workers and automatic hiring. And we're going to set just most of them to automatic hiring as we find them. And here we go, this is the last one from the Insulae, automatic. I might have missed one or two, but for now we think we've got most of them done. Oh no, here's a guard tower. Automatic. Now at some point we're going to have to start hiring archers instead of knights, but I do still want to wait with that because archers at this level are pretty lame. Oh yeah, look at these guards going in. With this many dudes on patrol, I'm going to feel super confident the next time we have a raid. In fact, the next raid, I think as a challenge, I'm going to not help at all. If somebody's under attack, I'm just going to stand back and watch. And here we go. I think this one in the plaza should be the last guard tower. I've definitely probably missed a couple. And there's only actually two dudes. In fact, that means this is a guard tower. There must be one other guard tower hiding somewhere where we can hire some dudes. I've got to try and track that down. Oh, of course, it's going to be this one, this one right here on the plaza. So this will be the final guard tower. Manage workers, automatic, Mav Abernathy is going to become another guard, and we're going to be good to go. Now, these things are only level one, which I believe means they can use stone tools. So we're going to have to go back to base now and create a whole bunch of stone swords as well. I don't want to bother making leather armor, though, because leather is super expensive. Honestly, iron is better to make, easier to get at least. Anyway, I reckon by now, the research must have been done. 15 minutes have passed for sure. Let's go and have a check. Hey, bada bing, bada boom. How's it going, tuppy, my lady? How is your research coming? Okay, so it's very close. It says 15 minutes remaining, but that's because it always rounds up to the nearest 15. So, these guys are right on the edge. You can't even see the progress meter. I think any second now, we're actually going to see this research complete. 
And in fact, there it is, biodegradable and woodwork in the bag. So it's gonna be the sawmill, one of the most important buildings we can build. Now the sawmill is gonna live over here in the industrial district. It makes sense, right? Even though it uses wood, which is kind of agricultural, this is where we're gonna be doing all of the kind of crafty construction stuff. So let's see what this thing looks like. We've got a nice big space here to work with as well. This is gonna be quite an easy build. So craftsmanship carpentry, sawmill, and let's take a look. Oh my God. Oh wow, this thing is A, huge, and B, awesome. Wow, yeah, oh my god, take a look at this bad boy. This is quite frustrating because basically this is a mine, right? And building this to level 3 should have expanded our boundaries by about 3 chunks. But I don't think it has. I think because the mine block is right over in the other corner, it really isn't close enough to the edge to have pushed it out. Oh man, well what are we going to do? Well, there's kind of really only one thing for it. We're going to have to try and upgrade the mine to level four to try and push our boundaries back a bit further. But what are the build options for level four? How savage are these requirements? Oh, wait a minute. Nothing at all. This is all just way more of the same. But there's got to be some kind of weird block, right? So build options for level four, it's just cream bricks. There's nothing from the nether here at all. Well, okay then, this seems like a bit of a no-brainer. We're gonna upgrade this to level four. So let's do that. And in fact, while we're doing that, maybe it's time we brought Jay up to speed and got his builder's hut up to level four as well. Once the mine and the builder's hut is level four, then we can maybe think about putting down the sawmill. So a lot to build, a lot to upgrade. We'll get that builder's hut up to level four and the mine also up to level four feels good to get things up in higher levels. But we do have a slight problem. You might be able to see that our builder is kind of stuck over there at the mine. She somehow got caught in the wheel and now she's running like a crazy hamster. Yeah, <laughs> there we go, Nikki, good job. Anyway, once we'd stopped that wheel, she got back to work and picked up pace. You can see the builder's hut in the background is level four now. That's gonna be great. Having both builders at the same level is gonna reduce a lot of headaches. So the mine at level four gets an extra level. Amazing, can't wait to see what goes on upstairs there. And as the sunbeams cascade over the mountain, boom. The mine is level four, excellent stuff. Now I took a look at the boundary and I realized, oh my God, getting the mine to level four still didn't give us enough space. So we've come over here by the sea wall to make a guard tower. I'm a bit nervous about splashing too many of these around, but it really was required to push the boundaries back and give us enough space to build this sawmill. And a guard tower goes up very, very quickly, especially just to level two and three. So here we go, Jay. I think level two should do us for now. Thank you very much. So with the boundaries expanded now, we have enough room to put down the sawmill and we're gonna jump straight into this. Now the sawmill has a massive footprint and I can't work out why it's so big. It does look really, really, really cool though. And even though it looks like it's kind of sandwiched in here, there is still plenty of room on the outside to get a road that will go around it. Like I've said before, I am kind of worried that we haven't got enough room in the industrial area. So we're gonna be expanding this area out as much as possible to give us as much space as possible. And I think we're gonna push back where we actually want those big Theodosian walls a bit further out. Man, but thinking about it, this city is gonna be huge. It's gonna be a massive behemoth. And boom, here it is, the level one sawmill. And yeah, this guard tower level two, but I'm kind of thinking now we have the sawmill in place, I could even get rid of this guard tower, but I'm not gonna because we might need more guards down the line, who knows? It's not hurting anybody being here just now, but what we will do is remove this sand so our dudes can actually get to their job. Although I wonder, is that sand put there for a reason? so that the guards don't have to go inside the guard tower? Can they get stuck inside here? 
I don't know, was the sand there for a reason? Well, anyway, this place is gonna need a guard, but it looks like we're fresh out of dudes. So we're gonna have to go over here and hire a carpenter to work in the sawmill, and we're also gonna have to hire a guy at the tavern to come and stay in the colony. Oh, someone left their sleeping bag here. Hmm, clumsy. So we got Cheesy 101, I love it. We got Ivana Hoobies. Do we really want another Hoobies though? We got so many so far. And <laughs> who's this? Oh man, it's Leonard Butthole. Oh, that, that's, that's a choice as well. So what do these guys cost? What do you want, Leonard? Oh my god, redstone dust. I think I actually have some in my backpack. No, I got raw redstone, not the same. But I feel like this colony needs a butthole, so we're gonna go and grab some. Good to see you. There you go, son. Fracture this. So his skills, oh, we should have looked at his stats, but they're pretty good across the board. The lowest here is seven. So let's go and find out what a carpenter actually needs. This is a really impressive, cool looking building as well. I do like it a lot. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, we're not doing too bad. 21 and 13, Leonard has pretty good stats for this. So once we have the carpenter, let's bring him over. Oh, looking very dapper, my friend. But he's off, he's going. No time, he <laughs> doesn't, doesn't want his job. Sure, whatever, that's okay. Well, once he has stuff to do, I'm sure he'll come back. So you have two sections for crafting recipes, one for regular crafting recipes that you can teach, and one for custom recipes. And the custom recipes are to do with the architect's cutter. So all of these weird plank walls that you see, all of the pillars, all of the panels, anything that basically says Domum Ornamentum on it is kind of a architect's cutter recipe. So with that in mind, the first thing we said we were going to configure is the scaffolding that the miners going to need to do their job. Because, as you've guessed it, they've kind of stopped. They made some headway, but there's a lot to do. Oh man, and the level 4 mine, I didn't take a look at this earlier, but this thing's a real beast. Two floors, and upstairs we have, oh my god, a couch. Very nice. Great place for R&R, &R, but also a basement. Oh, so the rack space now hooks up to the main hut bit. Very cool, very cool indeed. So, oh my god, he's stuck. Are you okay? Yes. Right, here we go. So like I said, to continue his job, this guy is going to want some scaffolding. He's going to want framed spruce planks. The frame material is spruce log, and the center material is spruce planks. But there's another way that we can see what he wants, because if we have our mine colonies clipboard, and this thing's probably going to be a mess. But yeah, as you can see, it also shows up here. He's looking for framed spruce 1 to 32. Now, that shouldn't be a massive issue. By just adding these two inputs, we automatically teach the carpenter all of these recipes. It's really, really, really efficient. So, boom, teach. 1 of 10 in the bank. Every time you go up a level in this building, you get 10 more recipe slots. And that number can further be augmented by research, but yeah, looking good. So he knows how to make this thing that the miner wants, but he doesn't have materials yet. So we'll bring him over here, go to his inventory, and load him up with some of this good stuff. Oh my god, yes! Finally, the man is going to work. Here we go. And so yeah, with these in mind, all we have to do is make sure that the warehouse... Oh man, look at those specs. Very, very... um sophisticated. So all we have to do now is make sure that the warehouse always has a good supply of oak planks, oak logs, spruce logs, spruce planks. Oh, and also he's going to need the oak slab recipe. But there you go. Now he's got all of those things ready to rock. He's going to start crafting that scaffolding. And provided we can keep the miner updated with pickaxes, he's going to start to dig a legendary mine. We should be able to come back next episode to a really nice sprawling mine and hopefully lots of precious, precious, valuable ores. So a massive thank you for watching this episode of Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. This episode, we messed around in our house, got everything in there looking tickety-boo, moved over all of our inventory and the computer is absolutely rocking. We've got a kitchen now, got a guard tower over there, the mine is level 4 and the sawmill is in action. I can't wait to see what comes next, and I'm really excited to start expanding out this industrial sector. So don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, ding the bell for notifications about when the next video is coming, and until next time, take care.